Good evening. This is the moment you have been waiting for. The moment destined by God to present to you the wonderful words of life. It has been a beautiful journey so far. Yesterday, we had the privilege of listening to the messages about the prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ as given to two prophets, one, Daniel, and the other, John the Revelator on Mount Patmos. So today, on the island of Patmos, where John was exiled, he was able to write beautiful things that stand out for us from yesterday's lesson. One is the songs that John the Revelator speaks about. Have you ever considered that Revelation brings to our attention three diverse songs that tells of the Christian journey? The first one is the song of creation. And while at it, we lay the emphasis and the importance of you and I knowing that we have been specifically created by God for a purpose. Let no one tell you that you do not matter. God had you in mind from the very moment, even before you were conceived in your mother's womb. And so the song of creation is an invitation for us to praise the Lord who created us. The beautiful thing about our God is that he not only created us, but Revelation 5 gives us the other song of redemption, where we sing, for the Lord has saved us. Worthy is the lamb who was slain. He is worthy because he has redeemed us. We have been made to be priests and kings. The redemption that Christ affords us is that which gives us the confidence to come before him, that we may obtain grace and mercy to help us in time of need. Lastly, we looked at the song of Moses and the Lamb. This brings to view the moments just before the Red Sea when the Israelites, fearful of the oncoming Egyptians, fearful to return to the land of exile, the land of captivity, and like a lightning, like a stroke of lightning, Moses struck the Red Sea and it was parted for them to walk safely through. After that, the song of Moses and the, Moses was sung. And that will be our experience. After being saved from this sin sick world, we'll get a chance to sing the song of Moses and the Lamb. But when shall these things be? We were taken to Daniel chapter 2, where the function or the role of God in not only giving us strength, but also wisdom was greatly revealed. Through Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream interpreted where he was able to be shown the history of this world. And remember, there is a last day. There is a last night. There's a last day of pleasure, frivolous pleasure, of every man and woman. When that day comes, what shall your fate be? There was an appeal made to you and I that while there is still breath on our nostrils, let us make a choice for Christ. But how shall we make a choice for Christ when our health is dilapidated? For that reason, our health speaker, Dr. Chidi, invited us to consider means of reversing disease, especially the disease of our times, diabetes, which is diabetes and obesity. He invited us, dear viewer, to see that it is important to consider natural foods, unprocessed foods, eliminate sugar. And the power line is that bitter is better and sour is power. So you have an opportunity today to make a change in your lifestyle so that you are adequately preparing and engaged in the service of the master. But while at it, food is actually prepared in the kitchen. And most kitchens exist in our homes now. The family life speaker, Pastor David Mbaga, gave us a glimpse into what makes a happy home. Because without a beautiful, happy family, there can never be good, healthy food to enable us to live healthy lives as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So I let it. Family life is an invitation for you and I to consider and count the cost before engaging into a lifetime union that would not only affect our lives here, but also in the world to come. To the young people, the appeal is make haste slowly. Consider, count whether it is important or whether the person you intend to unite yourself with actually would go a long way in fulfilling your life destiny. To those who are already married, the counsel is 
do not wait for a third party to evaluate your marriage for you. While at it, continually evaluate your marriage and ask yourself whether it's actually fulfilling the purpose for which the Lord united you in it. And remember, when you are united in holy matrimony, God's blessings of children sometimes come along and it behooves you to ensure that these children are brought up in the ways of righteousness. To those who have chosen a life of singlehood, it was said that that too is a calling. But remain true to your calling. Remain true to that which God has given you. The punchline, of course, was, it is possible to buy a vehicle, but maintaining it requires wisdom, providence, and all things bright and beautiful. Today, we are going to learn about secrets to wellness, wholesome wellness of the body. We are going to learn about signs of the times that you and I may have our eyes opened, our ears on the ground to see the diverse signs that Christ spoke about when he invited or spoke about his second coming. Do not go away. This is still lined up for you. This is just the beginning. We continue broadcasting live. Live Seventh-day Adventist Church, Fifth Ngong Avenue, Nairobi. Thank you.